largely it's true, like Pepsi is not true, so it's not largely about Pepsi. But what I'm going to do or try to do is to share what I have written and again why what I have learned talking to each other uh, about as a profession and the profession. I worked in literally all the fields within finance wherever they are. And that's the reason, one, the reason I stuck with Pepsi because yeah, I, I got an opportunity to work uh, in different assignments, same organization, different roles, so you, you learn you learn basis that. Uh, currently, I'm, so I moved to Hyderabad in 2019. Uh, we set up a global capability center in Hyderabad in 2019. Uh, we started with two or three of us moved from Gurgaon, where our PepsiCo India and office for India is, and now we are close to 3,000 employees. And it's a great year uh, so far. So today, uh, what I've been talking about is what is a journey uh, us from a CFO to a CEO. It's a lot of things in discussion that what is expected from CFO now versus previously what a CFO is expected to do. Uh, so let, let, let me take a step back. Um, the environment in which the business are operating, the environment in which the business or the organizations are operating is changing very fast. If you see a, a decade or let's take a two decade uh, from a time horizon perspective, a lot of things have come. Globalization, globalization has a lot of benefits. Right? Uh, it has, consumers have got a choice, right? whatever they want. It helps in reducing the cost because you can source from best whatever is available. But it has a flip side as well. You are not an isolated now. If something is happening in say 14,000 kilometers apart from here, it is going to impact you as a business. Right? So that's that's point number one. Second is the geopolitical situations which keeps on arising at different points of time. Now it is incorrect to say that business are only depend on the economy. It, it impacts from an economic perspective. All it's like this. If there is a problem at one side, it has an impact on the other side. The third point, technology uh, disruptions. New business models are emerging. The, in fact, in a day there are a lot of business models keep going. New startups are coming. How business has to survive or reinvent themselves in order to, re to remain uh, competitive or remain in the the area where they are last but not least you all know the impact COVID has on us, right? COVID literally changed everything right from a consumer, customer buying pattern or their choices to the organization. Everything got changed and it, it's it's not that the things will stop here. Things will keep evolving over a period of time. The point which I'm trying to drive is that we are really doing really, really living in a world, it's a complex world. And if business have to survive, they have to reinvent themselves. That's a reality of the life. And change is the only constant. Now, what about the, the professionals who are working within the business, the employees, the rest, the, the CXOs? Business is the only important. So is the ask from the CXOs as well. Now, coming to our profession, finance profession, CFOs, all the finance ads, for the finance pattern. What is expected from them? If you see, again, when I passed out CA, obviously as a, as a fresh chartered accountant, the first aspiration is how can I reach to a CFO? Right? You look upon your CFOs to, and try to see what needs to be learned there. At that time, and I'm not discounting the efforts, but at that time the key was from a CFO responsibility perspective is financial reporting, be it an internal management or the statutory reporting, control and compliances. I'm just bucketizing very loosely and the inventor investor relationship. These are the three or four key and, and control compliance includes the audit and stuff like that, right? Which a CFO is expected to. A CFO or the group or the finance group are more a number cruncher. You crunch the number, you provide the information work more as a kind of a behind the scene and share the numbers, share the details and someone takes a decision. Right? 
can you act more as a budget control if something is there, whether you are allowed to do, not allowed to do. That's kind of a role a CFO used to do. And I'm talking a different organization and different ways of uh, moving up, but that's in general I'm talking about. Now, that limits a minimum requirement, right? That's that's that responsibility is not moving up. That will remain and will permanently remain as a requirement or an expectation from a CFO. Right? What has changed? is from keeping that piece intact to moving to a more a business partner role, more strategic and operational focus role. What I mean by that? CFOs are like a co-pilot to the CEOs in driving both revenue as well as the bottom line. They are no more only a cost custodian. It's basically you are partnering right from how to generate a revenue, what should your product you should launch, what should be a pricing strategy, how things, what consumers you should focus. That's where the co-pilot is now, it's like a co-pilot. The second expectation, it's, it's more about an expectation. The second piece is how to see an end-to-end -end because we all know that data is the new oil. Right? Now seeing, interpreting the data and making sense of that is what is CFOs has that end to end. So, how do you use that or uh, share that end to end? The other piece is CFOs are expected to drive the change, be the change agent in the organization, the transformation journey, the, the digitalization journey. That's probably CFOs are expected to lead that, right? And the, the, the four, that's the other requirement. And the last but not the least, earlier it's more about a financial risk management. How to manage your finance risk? It's moving to an enterprise risk management. What it means is that if say for example you, you become more and more global, what is happening in other countries will impact you. There may be change in the laws, there may be change in the regulation, there may be a PCP impact, there may be 10 different things which is non-financial in nature. But in most of the organizations, CFOs are expected to first work closely with the business community, identify them and then have a plan to mitigate. So that's that's a new additional ask uh, I would say from the CFO world is emerging day by day. Each organization are looking CFOs or the CEOs are looking CFOs to partner them in this journey. Now, we are good with numbers. We, we are good at what we are doing. Now, how to, what are the key pillars of uh, uh, that journey, which is CFO from a, a chief financial officer to a chief value officer? How to generate the wealth is is what? What are the key ingredients or key? Uh, I would say qualities as, uh, all of us should should have, or if not, we should uh, try to develop it. The first and the foremost, and, and, and again, I bucketize, just try to uh, inform, try to uh, make my point. First and foremost is the leadership. Now, we are supposed to lead, as I mentioned, we are a change agent uh, in an organization. We are supposed to lead a lot of, uh, a lot of projects or a lot of transformation. And that is not related to finance, that is basically cutting across all the all the operations, sales, everything. It's, it's like cutting, it's like a horizon, right? Now for that you need to have, to have a leadership quality. You need to have a quality to confine or to reduce the entire information in a more crispy and understandable way, right? So that you can leave the things. That's foremost important now. How to both interpersonal skills in terms of its team. You can't work in a silo as, a, as within finance, right? You have to work cross function Technology uh, is now since you are supposed to lead a lot of transformation things, you should be aware of what is happening in the world, the digital space, right? How you can leverage that. It's it's no more a thing that I'm not a technology guy. It, it, it is basically general. We need to know what is. We don't know. We are not required to know the coding, but we know what how you can use it in the business for that. That's first and foremost. The second, and I am a big fan of that, which is business partnering. Uh, a lot of my career I spent in partnering, working with. Sales, the, the supply chain heads, and the, the CEOs. Uh, 
Uh, and I firmly believe that we as a CA, we as a CFOs or a finance rep can play a very very important role. Right? Business partnering simply means, as I mentioned, it's like working along with the business. And it's not that you are saying yes to everything. First, you should understand the business model, what any organization is doing. It, right? In, in my case, for example, it's an it's a food and food and beverages. I should remind that what is happening in the real world market. Ultimately, sales are happening with the retailers who might call it a better uh, model trade. Unless and if you don't know that, you will not be able to add value to the organization. People will not be able to listen to you or to understand uh, your point. The moment you have the business knowledge, business acumen, definitely you have a strong background from a data perspective, you can marry both and then you can uh, work for a win-win for the organization. So that's again very very important and the importance of business partnering is increasing day by day. The funds or the resource being scarce, there is a lot of, you have one dollar, you have asked for ten dollars, obviously uh, you have to play an important role. Uh, risk mitigation, I, I touched upon the employee, uh, sorry, the, the enterprise uh, risk management. Becoming very important data. Think of an, any global organization. What is happening there, any part of the world is impacting you in some way or other. Right? Now, it's not only financial risk. It's like we saw Russia, Ukraine. Basically, I have not come across any industry which has not got impacted. Any part of the world. So, how to identify the risk and then how to mitigate the risk is what we know last but not the least, the strategy. CFOs are expected to play a very critical role in deciding the strategy of the They are in a position to, to influence what is long term for the organization and what so balancing long term and short term is what very much critical and which CFO can play a very important role. Uh, for that the point of view on, on the strategy, there are a lot of things we should become out of our comfort zone. What are the consumer preferences like? How many things happen in the market? Obviously, knowing how what as an organization will be good for a long term basis. How to invest, where to put your money, right? With, with the change, so much change happening, probably the resources are or the, the employees are not equipped. So how to put money there? Those money allocation and then communicating back to the investors, I think it's should know and should learn. That's what, and there are a lot of other levers as well. I just uh, captured the key one, the gym. And then I, I again re emphasize that fact that the core remains the core. It is it is not going to be go away. You are supposed to do the course is for sure. But how to take time out to do the other value added stuff is the key, right? You, you, you need to use technology, you need to enable your team to have a second round of leadership, things like that. Different people have different ways of working, different organizations have different ways of The key other is, are we ready? <clears throat> and again, it's a general thing I'm talking about. Different organizations and different CFOs are very different. If you see, this is, I took it from a survey, the CEOs feel about the CFO is, 45% cases is where you lack the business aspect from a CFO perspective, that's in general. Very good in, in core, but uh, the moment it comes to the hardcore business, uh, probably we are not doing that. Weak leadership skills, we are again good within finance, we are great, but cross-functional, are we good enough to influence people? That again in part, and I can just share an example I learned long back, but it, it helped me a lot. When I was buying Pepsi around yeah, 2009, after a year or two, I realized that I am sharing a lot of good insights. But people are not, especially cross functional are not doing much better, so they are not listening to me. And one day I went to my CFO and uh, obviously with a lot of frustration and said, I am doing so much effort. I know that we, are, we can do a lot of good things, but no one in the sales listens to me. No one in the surprise listens to me. He told me a very, very uh, good advice and I still follow that. He said, you're good in finance. You can explain things to me because I understand the finance, right? But if you need to make an impact, you need to 
explain the person in his or her understanding. What it means is if I want to drive something from sales guy, I need to communicate to him in very crisp way what he understands or she understands from a sales person. Then things will move. Instead of you just talk about your big parents, you should come up with a key of what you want to drive and then just pass it on in the way the other person understands. I think this advice has helped me a lot in my career. The other piece is we are too narrowly focused. We are like just focusing what is impacting my books, what is impacting my financial results. Seeing a big picture again, thinking of the long term horizon is again where uh, CEOs think that we as a CFOs are lacking. And last, the interpersonal skills, right? We, we, uh, we are not so great in even selling ourselves, right? We, we more want to prefer to perform and that's it. But how to sell ourselves to talk to people and things like that. I think it's, these are the things we need to think whether are we doing or what are the things we need to think. In summary, change is the only positive. We as a CFOs, finance head, finance function uh, leaders need to definitely evolve ourselves and move. If we need to earn seat at the table. If, if we don't, then no one is going to. And the positive side is, we are in a place where we can see end to end and we, we can actually be a great asset to the organization in driving the business in, as a partner into a CEO from in, within the organization. You have seen a lot of CEOs become, uh, CFOs become a very good CEOs because they know the number, they learn the business skills and now they are doing it. So I think it's times are challenging, it is going to be COVID has gone, some other thing will come, something will happen, business needs more inputs from CFOs. We need to keep thinking how to develop ourselves and that's it. In the sense, I think I am very very happy that I choose finance where you can actually influence a lot within the world. That's from my side. Again, it's, it's more a personal experience which I try to share it out. Happy to discuss whenever we meet and meet. Thank you so much once again, ma'am.